What the heck is up guys, it's Jacob here, and in this video I want to talk about Peak versus RMS. Uh, before we begin, I just want to say that I'm gonna, I'm not gonna really prove anything in this. Uh, I will do another video kind of identical to this using calculus where I prove some of these numbers. But I just want you to know that in this video, uh, I'm gonna do this one without calculus because not everyone really understands calculus. But I just want you to know that there are gonna be some numbers that kind of get pulled out of the magic hat, if you will. They just come out of nowhere, really. Um, and really, that's just because we need calculus to prove them. So I will do another video uh, for those of you guys who want to see that where we prove some some of these values using calculus, but uh, I don't think we really need calculus to understand the, the idea behind peak versus RMS. So to start, I really kind of want to explain what this RMS actually means, right? And so to do that, consider the following two circuits. If I had some AC power source over here, right, and I have some load, and it goes like this, and we'll call it, it's a resistive load. RL, right? So this is a purely resistive load. There's no inductance or no capacitance or anything like that going on here. Uh, it's just resistive. And I have that same exact that same exact load placed in this circuit. Really badly drawn resistor, but you get the point, right? And so this is a this is a DC power source, right? We have plus and minus, and this is RL. And what's really important to understand is these have the same same resistance. It's the exact same load, right? Imagine it as just being like a, a light bulb, right? And I take this light bulb and I have it in the AC circuit, and I put that exact same light bulb in the DC circuit. And my question to you is, how much power does this does this uh, light bulb draw, and really, you could kind of use Ohm's law for this, right? In this DC circuit, it's very easy. I could say power equals the the voltage of this battery, right? Whatever that voltage is, doesn't really matter, times the amount of current that flows through the circuit. Or we could say P equals V squared over R, right? Power equals voltage squared over this, this RL, or R sub L, right? And so that would tell us the actual power flowing through this circuit. And if I asked you that same question for this AC circuit, you would say, well, power equals voltage times current, right? Or we could say power equals V squared over R, RL, really, R sub L. But the problem here is, you, you, see that you might see the problem is quite evident quite quick. And you can see there's a sine wave here. And that's because, well, that is really how power flows in an AC circuit. And uh, the voltage is represented by this sine wave, as is the current and as is the power, right? So uh, really, it's very hard for me to place a value on this voltage because, well, to start, the beginning of the sine wave is at zero volts, then it's increasing, it's increasing, it's increasing, it kind of peaks up here, then it's decreasing, it's decreasing, then it's getting more negative, it's getting negative, 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 it peaks, and then it goes back to zero. So the voltage is kind of all over the place. It's never, ever constant. And so it's, it's impossible for me to really place a value on V. Same with the current. In a resistive load, the current will follow this exact same waveform. So the current would be zero, then it would be increasing, increasing, it would peak, it would decrease, 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 it hit zero, negative, 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 it would get less, negative, zero, and it would be impossible for me to place value on I because I as well is kind of all over the place in this in this sinusoidal waveform. And so really, uh, we see uh, quite a an evident problem here. It's it's impossible for me, for me to say um, the amount of power that's actually being dissipated in this in this resistive load. And RMS tr kind of tries to to tame that that uh, problem. And so RMS really kind of gives us this answer. It allows me to actually place an average power flow in this AC circuit. It allows me to say the average power equal to the to the uh, actual power that this same load would draw on the DC circuit. And I'll, I'll explain that in a little bit more detail. Let's go into another page here. So I really want to really want to show you guys what's going on here. <clears throat> so really, uh, I want to look at what RMS is really allowing us to do. So it, again, let's look at that sine wave up close, right? <clears throat> and so because this waveform is really kind of all over the place, uh, it's really impossible for me to pick a, a dead-on value uh, to place in this circuit. So what we do is we use something called the RMS value. And really, uh, if we look at this sine wave, uh, this sine wave kind of starts out at zero and then it peaks right here. And this is what we call the peak value. So that is the peak. And it's really it's self-explanatory. It's not really hard to understand. This is where the wave peaks. This is the peak voltage, the peak current, the peak power. It doesn't really matter. In a resistive load, they're all going to follow the same waveform. So your voltage will follow your current and it'll look the exact same. So you'll have a peak voltage, you'll have a peak current, and a peak power. 
But really, I'm really only concerned with how much power that resistive load is drawing over uh, over a certain amount of time. The average amount of power that this that this RL is using, right? Because of course it's it's never using the same amount of power. It's always going up and down. But I want to know the average power, and I want to know how I can equate this the average power in this circuit to the average power in this DC circuit. And so really. Uh, if we look at it, this RMS value is equal to the peak value of this circuit, so the peak, times 1 over the square root of 2. And the 1 over the square root of 2 is about 0 0.707. And I just want to let you guys know, this is those values that I said I was going to kind of pull out of nowhere. I will prove these values and where they actually come from in my other video where I show this same thing with calculus. Uh, but I just want you guys to know that these values come from somewhere, and also they only apply to sine waves, okay? But I'm showing you guys a sine wave because that's typically how power is distributed, is with sine waves. But this only applies to a sine uh, waveform. So the RMS value is equal to the peak value times 0 0.707. And you'll notice that a, a common uh, household voltage is 120 volts, right? But if you look at your actual waveform coming out of your uh, receptacle on an oscilloscope, you'll notice that it actually peaks at around about 170 volts, right? So the actual peak is way up here at 170. So really, if you did 170 times 1 over the square root of 2, or about 1.707, you would get it's approximately equal to 120 volts AC. And this is RMS. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to use this, this RMS value, this RMS, 120 volts RMS, it allows us to use these values in an Ohm's law uh, kind of equivalent for AC circuits. And this allows us to calculate the average power consumed by a circuit. So, really, these RMS values could then be placed back into our old problem. This old problem right here could take this voltage RMS value, so we could rewrite this as VRMS. We could, re we could rewrite this as IRMS. And so I want to take a further look at this. Alright guys, so I want to examine these two circuits again. And I want to take a look at that same problem, right? So if I wanted to find the, the amount of power dissipated in this circuit, power equals V squared over R. Uh, this isn't really, a, again, a video on Ohm's Law. I don't really want to prove all, all this in here. I have another video on Ohm's Law in case you guys are lost in this section. If you don't really understand this Ohm's Law stuff, go watch my video on Ohm's Law. But I'm assuming you guys kind of already have an idea of what Ohm's Law is. So power equals V squared over R, right? And so here the voltage is constant, our resistance is always a constant, right? Our RL is always constant, so there's no issue. We can easily find the power, just plug in whatever voltage it is, uh, assuming this is just V, right? Some voltage, and you could find the power in this circuit quite, quite uh, easily. So this AC circuit over here, uh, before, like I showed you guys, it was kind of hard for me to say P equals V squared over R because that value was really all over the place. It was constantly changing. But what this RMS really allows us to do is it allows me to say, okay, let's take the peak of this waveform that where it really peaks out at, and I'm going to multiply that peak times 0 0.707. And I'm going to take that value, and I'm going to call it the RMS value. And so what I can really do is I can find the peak of this waveform, multiply it by 0.707, and then I call that the RMS, and I'm going to put that VRMS right here in Ohm's Law. And so now this becomes the average power. It's not the instantaneous power. This is the average power over time. So if I wanted to find the average amount of power consumed by this RL or this load, right, it is going to be equal to the, the average power over here. And so really what uh, RMS values allow us to do is it allows us to say, I want to find the average power, not the instantaneous, but the average power of this load. And I'm going to use it using the uh, average or the RMS current uh, times the VRMS. And so really these, these RMS values here allow us to find an average power and equate that to uh, this, this power up here in a DC circuit. And that's really the beauty behind RMS. And again, the, I'm sorry that I really couldn't prove this to you guys, this 0 0.707. I will do that in another video if you guys are interested in that. But for now, I just kind of wanted to explain w what all this stuff means and kind of why we use RMS values. And so really, the difference between 
peak and RMS, as peak is really the top of your waveform, and RMS is going to be 0.707 times your, your waveform, assuming you're dealing with a sine wave. Of course, we're, we're only dealing with a sine wave here. You'll see why that matters in my derivation video where I derive this, but it does really matter. But this doesn't really look like a sine wave, but it's your peak value, and then your RMS is kind of kind of somewhere over here, right? It's about point. 707 of your peak value. So really the difference is RMS allows us to kind of apply Ohm's law to average uh, average values in AC circuits, whereas uh, the peak value is really kind of instantaneous. Peak is, is more of an instantaneous, it only happens right here at this exact second, this exact point in time. Uh, nowhere else is the voltage is the same, whereas RMS is kind of allowing us to analyze this entire waveform over time and apply uh, some value, some average value to this waveform over time. And that is what the RMS does for us. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and like always guys, have a good one.